All right, everybody, this is going to be part two of the abominations of desolation. Uh, let's see, we stopped in Daniel 9, verse 15 last time. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 16. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, the holy mountain. I did a playlist on the mountains of the mountain of God. Uh, Jerusalem's called thy holy mountain. Uh, do you know that Jesus, you know, I think what the uh, Sermon on the Mount, I think it was the Mount of Olives. If my memory serves me correctly, when Christ comes, he's going to return on the Mount, the Mount of Olives. Do you know that Jerusalem's built on seven mountains? That's why it always says in the Bible, let us go up to Jerusalem. Let us go up to Jerusalem. I mean, you know, so when they talk about uh, Mystery Babylon on seven hills, um, Rome's not the only place that has seven mountains or seven hills. So, all right. I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the, thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, our, O oh, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh, my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplications and presenting my supplications um, before the Lord I'm sorry, hold on. Verse 20. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel. Now, people, John the, ba uh, John the Baptist's father uh, and what was his wife, Elizabeth, uh, he was he was in the temple and was visited by Gabriel, and he told him that he was. Uh, we should read that, you know. Yeah, let's go read that. All right, let's take a look at Gabriel. Now here in Daniel nine, Gabriel. Uh, well, let's see. There's four times Gabriel is mentioned. Daniel 8:16, Daniel 9:21, and Gabriel here is called a man. Okay? A man. And then in Luke chapter 1 and verse 19 and 26. So, let's take a look at Luke chapter 1. Uh, let's see. That's right, Zacharias. Now let's take a look. Let's read, let's read Luke chapter 1. Let's read about Gabriel. Now Gabriel is called a man, but yet he's an angel. Luke chapter 1. Start in verse 5. 
There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now, Aaron and Moses were brothers. They were Levitical priests. They were Levites. Uh, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. They're old. Old people don't have kids. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And that people's what you call holy smoke. I know, I'll quit my day job. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. But when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Oh yeah, I think I'd be worried too. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. See, the angel names John. And did you know Jesus was named by an angel too? And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Many, not all. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Now, some people argue saying he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's room. Others say that when he came out, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't know. Even as a little tiny newborn, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to argue whether... Well, I'm just saying. People love to argue and confuse things. I think the Bible's simple, but that's just me. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. That's the Greek rendering of the word Elijah. I did a study on uh, John the Baptist and Elijah. Okay, John was not Elijah. He went in the spirit and the power of Elijah. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And that's what John the Baptist did. He prepared people for the Lord, Jesus, who is the Christ. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Oh boy, here's the punchline. Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is, and my wife well stricken in years. In other words, he's he's not asking, oh, how's this going to be done? He's saying, oh, pff, this is impossible. My wife's old. She can't have children anymore. That's the Bob translation. Okay, now contrast this with Mary. Mary, when she uh, said, you know, you're going to have a kid and uh, thou shalt not call his name Jesus, she says, she asked, how shall this be, being that I've known not a man? She wasn't saying, oh, that's impossible. No, she didn't say that. She was asking, she's basically saying, well, I believe you, but how are you going to bring this about? Being, I haven't been with a man, so how am I going to have a kid? And then the angel, I, I'm not sure, I think it was Michael, said that uh, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. Now, there's a big difference. There's a big difference between asking how and here, you know, in the writing, it's kind of hard to see it. But, you know, Zacharias is not saying, oh, how's this going to happen? We're old. No, he's saying, ah, this is impossible. For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. How do we know this? Verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God 
and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. Because thou believest not my words. So in other words, he's not going to be able to speak for nine months until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. There's a difference between saying, um, how is this going to happen? And how is this going to happen? I'm an old guy and my wife's too old. We can't have children. She's in menopause. Don't you know anything, Gabriel? You know, that, that's kind of the Bob translation. So, um, and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he uh, departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel... Ah, here we go. I'm sorry, it was not Michael, it was Gabriel. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at a saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation or greetings, right? What manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yeshua HaMashiach? No. No. An angel of the Lord came and said, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. God's angel named Jesus. God's angel named John the Baptist, Gabriel, verse 32, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's not saying, oh, that's impossible. I'm a virgin. I don't, I've never touched a man. I can't get pregnant. Don't you know anything, Gabriel? No, she's not saying that. And verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. All right, people, this is the end of this study. This is going to be part two of Abomination Desolation. We're going to go back to Daniel chapter 9. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Christ. Amen.